Let's go. Welcome to the Soul Fam Podcast, where we expand your personal universe. I'm Diana Marchetta, and in each episode, Soul Fam co founder, co creator Lexi Strummer Solden, and I interview the world's most rising and longtime experts in consciousness, spirituality, entertainment, healing, and science from Earth's dimensions and dimensions way, way beyond. On the Soul Fam podcast, our frequencies are high and your heart chakras will open as these powerful voices of today share cutting edge research, profound experiences, and valuable knowledge for your world in this out of this world, thought provoking, envelope pushing interviews that could only take place right here on the Soul Fam Podcast. I feel like we're in a great position. It feels crummy, but we're in a great position because like a a person like uh, Robert Edward, what's his name? Grant? Yeah, Robert Edward. Like Big fan. brilliant, brilliant human being in my opinion. Yes. And he's bringing information, like he's taking the old and bridging it to the new with the quantum, with the math, with everything. And I find that fascinating being a science mind um, and how spirituality and science, or maybe we should say it the other way, how science is merging with spirituality and how it's now we're seeing these patterns and, and, you know, what the sages, uh, the, the thinking minds of the past have been telling us all along. And now we're seeing physical proof in all this and um and if it's not even proof it's like it just makes sense like you can visualize something a concept way better than ever and i think you know we're just on the cusp of of things right now you know and uh yeah i mean I know that's not what, how you're going to start, but whatever. What, how no, do you I want think, to do? I think this is great. I think we should start exactly like this. And um, yeah. my question for you is, it feels like we're on the cusp of this. <laughs> for some of us, it feels like we've been dragging along for 20 years now. But at, at this moment, does it feel exciting to you? I ha- Yes. See, for the last couple of years, I've kind of like... Uh, I don't want to be a hermit because I still work and I still putting things together and all that because you got to function somehow. <laughs> and, uh, but I've been doing a lot of inner work and, and studying all these, you know, and rereading books that I read 20 years ago because it's all coming together. So it, it's getting me really, really excited, uh, for my path. I, you know, I, I, I tend to say, I know nothing, but we know everything. I know nothing, but we together know everything. And so it's kind of bringing all that together and just lighting our own fire, you know, and, and really understanding how we're here to serve. And, you know, this, this, process that I've gone through, you know, a big framework guy, here are the steps, but the framework is really is circular. It's not even um, one step at a time because you find yourself on a step, but then you see all kinds of other things that are related to the first step and the last step. It's just mind blowing when you actually take the time to look at things in with different eyes, mm-hmm. different lens, perspectives, and um, <clears throat> we're seeing, you know, the awakening process that's been happening, as you said, in the last 20 years. Yeah, well, I've been doing this for a long time. And it to me, it was through service and helping others 
that helped me understand not only myself, but how things work from my position, right? So the awakening is everything's crumbling, right? And um, the old systems, like the Piscean Age, uh, as we transition to the Aquarian Age, nobody has a date. It's not like, okay, December 25th, Jesus' birthday, we're going to now be free into the, you know, it's this transition because each epoch or um, age, whatever you want to call it, um, is about 2,000, 2,100 years old. So as we're transitioning from the Pisces to the Aquarian, you know, what was the Piscean age about? I mean, really, it was about spirit, spirituality, religion, but there was sacrifice and there's compassion and align it with a nation or a religion. Like all those religions were born, so to speak. And, um, and it created separation. And everybody sacrificing, we'll call it sacrifice for our belief systems. Uh, which is causing, you know, our wars are based on that, really. Mm-hmm. You know, is it Muslim territory or is this Jewish territory, Hindu, whatever, Christian, Catholic? How many uh, Christian uh, dogmas are there? You can have a whole list, right? Protestant, whatever. So I think that was an important space for us. And now that we're bleeding into the uh, Aquarian age, we're finding it's more about, I mean, information. Come on, information galore, AI and more. But why, why is it so important? Why is social media important? If it was used correctly, we would share rather than say my way is the way. And, you know, how can we, um, bridge the gap so to speak okay so the aquarian age is about humanitarian needs social Mm -hmm. progress it's about um equality freedom and we're voicing that right now but we're not doing a great job we're still trying to figure that out and how do we collectively come together for everyone for our own well-being and the well-being of our community and all the things that we have so many causes, right? That's still in the separation. How do we come together and share the information from our perspective without getting all, you know, angry, resentful, whatever? And I think it's, it's really the Aquarian age is about love. We've heard about this for 20, 30 years. I mean, um, but now we're starting to sense it's near. So the people like you and I or whoever it is really <clears throat> looking to get to that place, which is sovereignty, which is I am sovereign to myself and I choose to share whatever my essence is with the next person. But it's going to be based on my needs and my purpose. I say, lately I've been saying this, I know what I am, which is that energy, that soul, that God consciousness. And I know who I am, right? And I want to learn more about how I can serve as I am. So. By having the confidence of knowing who I am, the self-discovery, the self-realization uh, is key. And I think that's where we're sitting right now. And now that the quantum world, the science world is saying, hey, everyone, this is what we are. We're like Wayne Dyer has been saying, we're spiritual uh, beings having a human experience. Now we have to discover that because life is about experience, right? So, um, and people say, I know, I know, I know. And we've talked about this in past podcasts. It's like, okay, you know, but 
how do I say it? I know what I know. And I know what I don't know. But I don't know what I don't know. So it's, it's, this awakening is about an, a period of awareness. What don't I know about myself? What don't I really know about what I don't know? And so this is a beautiful time. It's exciting as, you know, people are into law of assumption and quantum physics and science. And these are all based on hermetic laws, which has been around for thousands of years, right? So, um, and we utilize it in, in energy healing. We're utilizing that law of vibration, law of, you know, mental mentalism, and it goes on, law of correspondence, cause and effect. All these apply, and it still applies. And, and so, you know, we're breaking down these traditions that, are, that no longer serve us. And we're seeing that with our, you know, the elections, the wars, the, the polarity of people. And I think if we don't experience this polarity and why it doesn't work and bring it to a balance, we're, we're you know, we're, we're going to fail in, in a sense. So it's about unity consciousness. Let's start from the basic. Let's start with those hermetic laws or, uh, you know, the laws of the universe. I think that's what we are. We are the law. We are one with the creator of all, and we get to co-create with the all. And uh, we create our own reality based on who we think we are, right? Who we believe we are. Uh, what's that famous Descartes? Uh, um, I think, therefore, I am. Oh, yeah. Right. And you've heard me say this in, in the past. I love, therefore I become. That's my right. offshoot of that. I love, therefore I become. Because I know this is an ongoing expansion, right? The universe is expanding. So must I. And, um, but we're the ones who are giving meaning to life and how we should go out there. And, and we're, we're taking the outer world and seeing how I fit in there. But right now, as we go into the Aquarian ages, this is who I am. Now, how, how can the outer world fit me in? It's a slight difference. Okay, hold on. So yes. I want to ask this, this question because this is a question I think that comes up for a lot of us in this equation. If I know who I am, whether it's my oversoul, my if I know who I, my true essence is, why is it necessary for me to fit in? Why can't it work from the other way? Um, because we forget why we're doing what we're doing. Why am I trying to fit in? I want global conscious togetherness. And so, so here I am. I know that I'm powerful in this particular area. Now, where in the world can I contribute? How do I serve is what it boils down to. Right. We're here to serve. So without expressing who I am, the world won't know where I fit in the sense of the global, holistic approach to helping each other. That's, that's what I'm saying. Right. So going back to something that we said, that you said early on in this conversation, we were talking about how like you're great at creating a framework for people so that it gives us some logical steps to sort of follow. But I may have misinterpreted this, but part of what I thought you were saying is the first step is also the last step. Like things seem to be coming full circle for us both internally and externally. Is that yes. clear? Is that my understanding? Yeah, um, or an because because of the law of polarity or duality or you know mm -hmm. the poles. When right. here's the thing that's happening, um, we think positivity is the light, okay, and positivity is going to bring us everything we want. And okay, on the in the chain of um, manifestation, right? If I stay do my positive affirmations and do, you know, 
visualizations, I'm going to bring that in. However, what's dangerous is, is that if we think we're just positive, we might be missing stuff. So the whole thing is, okay, so this is the positive. Where am I being a block to myself or negativity or where am I being negative or patterns that are not my highest? We can't ignore. We have to go to the opposite, opposite side or the things that are blocking us in order to find the balance where the light actually happens. Just like a light bulb, two poles. It's not happen. The light doesn't happen in the on the positive pole. The light's That's happening true. in between. Right. So it's 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 in the awareness. The yes, awakening is the awareness that we have the polarity, which, which is the law and the cause and effect, which is the, one of the laws of the universe. So it's in accepting our flaws and understanding I can't do that pattern. So if I accept that I do that sometimes, I'm going to make better choices in accepting both and integrating to the awakening, to the ascension. Like there's so many words, right? So I think that's what's circular is that, oh, I, I did that. My goal is this. I had to learn this and accept this in order to be that. So that becomes a holistic approach to being whole mm -hmm. and healing mm -hmm. and being empowered and being sovereign. All these things, all these words that are popping up now that we'd never used before, you know? Right. We never used in the collective. You and I might use it in a conversation, but it's sort of becoming normalized in conversation in general. And even yes. articles or magazines or the press or whatever. Or commercials. That's right. I just saw a magazine at the grocery store yesterday about manifestation. I'm like, when did that happen? <laughs> right. Like that, that just we, happened. And to your point, we've been talking about this these subjects, or like I read Power of Awareness 20 years ago by Neville or 25, whatever it was. Power of Awareness by Neville Goddard, and I read it, it blew my mind. And then I mm -hmm. went to Joseph Murphy and all these manifest manifestation gurus if we can call it that and then you just kind of forget because you get lost in what you're creating and then you go and then you find it again and now everybody's not everybody right but those people who are choosing to look at it that way and i think we're we're just beginning to become aware but because there's so much the social media aspect and the videos and youtube and all that the information is there now we have ai you could probably type that in for all i know what are the laws of uh, assumption and blah blah blah, blah. Sure. so what what is that if we know how to use that for our purpose in creating a u uh, unified conscious place then we got power but if we're using it to be powerful to uh <clears throat> Well, we'll probably talk about this later, but creating to gain more power. Right. It's, it's not, it's not going to work. It's not going to work for our world, I think. Right. Because that is no longer a truth. Like, so the truth will not, will no, the untruths will no longer work. This sounds really simple, right? But the untruths will no longer work. They just won't. So the truths yes. will work. The, the universal truths, the universal yeah. untruths will no longer work, which is That's part of right. the dismantling. That's right. And we're seeing that dismantling. Mm -hmm. The powerful, what well, we gave so much credit to, you know, sorry, economically, the government, the, um, um, so I'm going to just turn this phone off because I don't want to be disturbed. Sorry about that. Um, everything is starting to break down, right? And we, we've lost trust in those authorities. And what's happening now is we collectively start talking about it. 
and everybody's at different levels and different timelines or whatever, and that's okay. But the fact that there's conversations happening around this is beautiful. And we are fact checking what what is the fact. Until you know who you are and and I'm big on values. Know your values. I, I you know, vivid imagination is something that I use with my clients. And V stands for values, I stands for identity, who am I? V, the other V is visions. What am I truly wanting to create, create as a co-creator? I is the intention. Why, why do I want to do this? And then D, destiny. So even in vivid, it's a circular. It's, it could be even, for all I know right now, it could be even the infinity symbol. Right. Right. But, but we're trying to find the center of that infinity circle within us. And this is where the sovereignty comes in. This is the self empowerment. And this leads to all the sages, including Yogananda, with self realization. It's, it's, what is self realization? It's understanding the self that we are the what? The divine essence. Who am I? You know, I know what I am. So I, so it's the, it's the, Practically, it's direct experience of that. You know, Yoganadana brought Kriya Yoga, you know, yoga, meditation, energization, exercises, etc. For us to steer away from our senses, our five senses, and go within. Right. I mean, how many and our material books? selves. Right. How many books are we going to read about know thyself? Everything's an inside job. You know, we've been hearing that a lot. And those, there are a lot of, I mean, my clients are going through, a lot of them are going through a dark night of the soul. And what does that mean? It's like, nothing's working. The old stuff that I used to do is not working. And I'm so challenged. I don't know what direction to go in. And having personally gone through four or five maybe even six right i know right right this keep reinventing I'm, it yeah and i i needed i went through it again and in, in the last couple of years and but i haven't been this excited in my life about what's to come for my experience and in and in, in that experience is, is to share my experience and being um confident if i can say that in sharing what i have experienced and i've got i went back through relationship through all that, that i experienced all the way back to to my teenage years and i found some root disturbances blocks uh and, and it's it's blow my mind right because why did i act this way and you know why did i uh back away from stuff i finally figured that out and and it's through that vivid that i'm talking about really doing the work again from a different perspective that has brought me to this space and i don't know where it's going to take me but it's okay you know, um, it's going to land. I, I exist. You know, right. this is, I have another framework or <laughs> acronym, four E's, four E's, right? I exist. So four E's, uh, it's a play on words for calmness, if you will. Mm. But why are we here? Why do we exist? Right? That's a question we keep asking ourselves. What gives me meaning? What gives me purpose? Why am I here? And what's God doing? And I'm a victim or I'm, a, I'm, you know, whatever, whatever, uh, messages that we play within ourselves. But I, I thought, okay, so we're here one, the first D, or it doesn't even have to be, there's no, um, natural progression, but we're here to experience. We're here to express the second E, to express who we are, to experience what we are expressing, to expand our understanding, if you will, and our being, 
And then the fourth E is enlightenment to really merge back, go home, uh, do our thing and then go home. And then the cycle of that happens to experience, to express, to expand, to enlighten. And, and the state of enlightenment is different for everybody. Right. And we, we might even feel it every now and then, or we, we go to ayahuasca and we go, wow, wow, I'm enlightened. And then you come back, I gotta now fit in again. What did I see? Why did I see? There's so many, you know, downloads and visions and a lot of people are going through that right now, as you know, you know, portal openings and the cosmic energies are, are, are just like pushing us into the age of Aquarius, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And um, so you hear people talking about, okay, well, new uh, new beginnings, and uh, who am I going to be? And I'm going to go through a portal. I'm going to meet my maker. I don't know. Like everybody has different opinions. But it's got to be about us going inside and really accessing, self-realizing who we are. So, so in, when I, we originally sort of scheduled this interview, one of the things I wanted to sort of touch on was, especially for men, how is this affecting them? Because I just got to say, we girls have kind of been working on it for a while because, I mean, we sort of had to, some things just weren't working for us. So we were sort of forced to go inside in a way, not that we're victims, but to understand our own power as females. I see this happening with men now where they so much of what they've established is being is crumbling and they don't know how to they don't know how to navigate. I mean, we women aren't agreeing with them anymore. You know, things have changed relationship wise. The industries have changed. So they're like, how do I navigate this and still be my true self? And and I think in their essences, that's who they want to be as men. But they're not sure how to proceed. Well, I think there's a, yes, I agree. But I'm not saying uh, women know what they're doing either. Oh, no, we have no clue, but we're trying. Okay, okay. <laughs> so because of the law of gender, uh huh. Um, and this is through, through our, whether, it's, whether it be Jesus, whether it be Yogananda, whether it be uh, yin yang of Taoism and and so forth, Buddhism. Hinduism, gods and goddesses. Listen, everything has a masculine and feminine in it. Right. Right. So we just talked about polarity in two poles, positive and negative. Um, I feel really positive because men have been in this patriarchal system have been leading the way. And we can't take that away for a minute. And um, even though the clues are that we need to balance, right? Um, the patriarchal system has devised such things that the power went to the, to the men, so to speak. And men were given instructions on a, on a global level that you got to be this, right? Mm-hmm. You got to... Like there's there's this pressure. You gotta be a man, right? What does that mean? Right. You know, does it mean I have to be dominant? We're 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 taught because I I'm a man, but um I I, I never really bought into it on well, I bought into it for the first half of my life and then I realized that's not the way. But what if we think about a man, it's about what? Power, dominance. I got to do it myself. There's this aggression, there's competition. This is how we're taught, right? Right. For men. As male energies. Yes. I'm, As I'm male energy, energy, but it's 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 not really totally true. Mm-hmm. It's all for the sake of power and and we down, you know, the feminine and we think that's weak, the 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 feminine uh, qualities, right? There's the masculine qualities and then there's the feminine qualities. And so what are, if we really think about it, 
So the 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 right side of our brain, which is uh, governed by the left brain, is all about logic. So so what I have been finding is women are using more logic and left brain and trying to be strong and be a leader and independent and assertive and being protective and and being ambitious and disciplined, action, 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 and creating stability for within ourselves. And they're competitive too. That's masculine. Yeah. What is the feminine side? It's more, rather than being more rational and, you know, competent, the the feminine side, which is governed by the right brain, is more emotional, intuitive, wise, right? Uh, nurturing, empathetic, compassionate. It's about collaboration and uh, building the unit, right? If I'm wrong, you tell me. Uh, if I'm wrong about those. Uh, uh, the feminine side is more patient and more open. Let's let's talk about emotional emotionally intelligent. They discuss their uh, the ones that are feminine. I'm not talking gender. Feminine right. are more open to emotional intelligence and resilience. Right? right. They're more receptive. Trust, humility, um, connection. Okay, masculine, feminine. So when you look at the women in power, are they projecting that? Yeah, frankly, no. I, yeah, I, 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 they're acting I, like the guys. That's right. Oh, they're like the masculine, I should say. They're, they're, they're like their, the ma- their masculine right. energies to achieve. So let's beat the men up using patriarchal systems and blend it with a little bit of like, there's some beautiful leaders that are out there right now that are finding the balance Mm. men and women. But I don't want to go into um, the role of a gender. Right. That's what we're trying to break down. It's not so much about gender. Mm-hmm. And we don't need to devalue being feminine, like having that being part of our balance. Mm-hmm. Um, what's another I think toxic? We're talking, I think we're talking about different forms of leadership. So there's this balance, as you're just saying, about the, the masculine and the feminine and finding that, which works for all of us. Right. But yes, so it's leadership, but it's really about finding the balance within and being more Jesus-like, mm. being more Yogananda-like, being more the the role players that are that will help this world become a more global conscious place is by balancing and get rid of those toxic rules. You know the right. pressure to be a man. And when you don't feel like you're a man because you're not earning enough money and, you know, the list of things right. or or you're not taking care of business and, you know, and you're poor, or whatever it may be, it's it's devaluing who we are. Women are emasculating men and men are emasculating men because I have to be this. I've got to be that renaissance man. That looks like I don't know Brad Pitt or I don't, I don't know what is that man look like that <laughs> hunk, I, whatever, and and not be motivated be motivated by greed and being able to express emotion. That's what we all need. Mm-hmm. The masculine has a hard time expressing emotion because we don't want to look weak, vulnerable. That's weakness. If you're vulnerable, you're you're weak. But now we're finding there's more men, and I'm seeing I've seen, you know Los Angeles has 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 had men's group for years now, men's groups where right. they are they are allowing and accepting that we are all um, we all have emotional sensitivity, we all are allowed to uh, be soft in moments, 
you know, finding that balance. We don't have to be aggressive and competitive and think we know everything or flashing our material things to show I've got power and I'm a, more of a man because than you. And then, then abusing men, women around us that we think are weak and saying here and dominating them. So it's, it's a hot spot for me because I think, you know, part of my uh, own experience is that I went so far to the feminine that I lost some of my masculine. Hmm, interesting. So, so this time around, it was how do I balance this where I'm not looking weak or no, 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 not, not even about looking. I don't right. care what the other world thinks. How do I feel? Right? What state am I? I am a loving human being and I'm marrying Yogananda from that place in the balance of knowing what I want to create, asserting what I want to create, but with the idea of nurturing, with the idea of empathy and compassion and kindness and blending it together to get things that I believe will help others mm -hmm. as my service um, and being confident in that and taking right. actions based on that. So um, it's really interesting. It's about resilience. It's about adaptability, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like the what we're learning right now is about emotional intelligence. We are, are, are starting to really go within and understand, why do I feel this way? What thought is generating that emotion? What belief is generating that emotion? Why do... Is it because my grandfather taught me this? My, my parents taught me this? Society taught me this? Why? If I really want to resolve this, I got to own my sovereignty, my own self power and generate enough confidence to express who I am. And then that vibrational frequency of whatever I'm expressing will be met by other like frequencies, vibrations. So now we, we, we become interdependent because we're so uh dual and codependency versus um in in independent it's almost severe independence right mm -hmm. because we don't love ourselves <laughs> we hide and then we think we have to do everything on our own in order to to exist and experience what we want and and you know as the guy who's going to be running Love More Nation. You are running the, Love More Nation. <laughs> yes. It's, it's, it's finding your truth, knowing what love is, because everybody is here to love and be loved. Because that's how this universe, from what I perceive, is about. Right. And love is also creation. It's not just a romantic love. It's not a, a mom and child love or a father and child or a community love. Maybe it's more of a community love, actually. But love is that creative factor. Right. Because I think of love as a con concentric circle. It's the power right. of love, the, the prana, the chi, the life force that we use that which is given to us automatically because we are one with that being, mm -hmm. entity, God, universe, intelligence. And, and we are taking that energy through our breath and then creating, to your point, whatever it is that we need to create and, and cycling through that breath of love to create more love that's why i call it love more so it's about understanding going back to what i said earlier um that i know what i am i am that and then filtering it through my vessel my body my being in knowing who i am and and when i know who i am i know how i can serve as I am. 
And it's all, again, cyclical. It's all coming like the breath. So do you feel, especially through your own work, is this a vibration that we need? Like, is there a signature vibration that each of us sort of have, a frequency, a knowing, a whatever it is, that when I'm walking around, going to the grocery store, or working on the podcast, or working on a film, that, you know, if I'm carrying this vibration that is significantly mine and is from that core of love, is that a kind of key factor? Is that a key to achievement? Is that a yeah. key to influencing the, the collective? Absolutely. Um, listen, we all have different stations. Mm-hmm. Let's use the old uh, analogy of a, I don't know, radio station or TV station that we love, right? Mm -hmm. And we stick to those stations because that's what gives us fulfillment, joy, you know, whatever it is that we're seeking and feeling that, you know. So you could like country music and I can like rock music and so forth. Stay in your station. (laughs) Go into that station and what does that station represent? Your values, your intentions, your identity, you know, your destiny. So that frequency, the station that you land on that you feel joyful, truthful, conscious, is a station you need to, to continuously listen to. But for our intents and purposes, we are, we are like a speaker that um, expresses, exhibits, emanates that vibration out. When you know your station or your frequency, you're 99.9. Great. Right. That's that's where you belong. If you're 98.1 and listening con- to contemporary music, that may not be giving you everything that you need, but, oh, all my friends are listening to 98.1. I better do that. But you're doing yourself a disservice by not listening to 99.9 or hiding it Mm -hmm. or suppressing it. So everything is frequency. Everything is, now that quantum physics is telling us, everything is vibration, which is what Hermes said, right? So what we're trying to land is what do I value? What do I want to express? And so without feeling the need to change, without the need to have firm boundaries, uh, without the need to be angry and frustrated, Mm. but just to be 99.9, and this is who I am. I honor you and respect that you like 98.1, but I like 99.9. Right. And so you're emanating that frequency is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I, I understand. Which is, which is knowing who I am. With, with, with the infinite possibilities, like everything is possible under the, under the sun, if you will, in the heavens, in the astral realm, God consciousness, infinite intelligence. And the list goes on what, how people describe God, the creator of all. Every possibility that one can think of exists. And I think we're trying to learn that 8 billion people only know 8 billion perspectives. We, we don't have an end goal, and that's what the expansion's about, is that can we look at different perspectives and create even more possibilities? But we've been so brainwashed to think, you got to follow these rules, these are the codes, these are the laws that are man-made, and they don't go back to, unless you go to some group that says, wait a minute, you are God consciousness, or you are one with God. I mean, there's so many different ways to look at this. Um, that you have the ability to choose, because everything that we're doing Everything that we are looking at, experiencing, is based on how we think about it. 
we give meaning to everything. Hmm. Everything is based on how I think. And so I choose to be either angry or joyful. I choose to look at this scenario as, oh, my God, the injustice. Or you can look at it, oh, my God, here's an injustice. How can we, we make it justified or, or, or good for everybody? Or this happened to me. I'm not a victim. What did I learn? You know, so we're, 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 going, we're all going through this. Some are ignoring it. I'd say a majority are ignoring it. And, and, and then the rest are starting to see that there's more to this than just what society is, that I can have an effect. Oh, the intent, sure. right? And the intention is the why. Intention is the why. So why do I want what I want? Because, the word because comes into play, right? Because. Well, I now believe, take that word because and be the cause. Yeah. I like that. Right? Like be that. the cause. What do you stand for? My intention is this. The why is because. Okay. So be the cause. The intention, which is, again, going back to the vivid, the circular, um, of knowing what you value, knowing what you think you, you love about yourself and your strengths, and then the, the visions that you keep having about what you think is, is peaceful, calm, creative, whatever you choose, and then why. Why goes back to the values. The intention goes back to the vision. The destiny, the destiny is the cause to have the effect on others, to serve. Okay, so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, this is great. Here's my okay. question. So the the desire to serve or the purpose to serve, like I think that's still new. <laughs> it's not new, it's old. But I mean, my great aunt was a missionary. That's part of my DNA, actually. And I come from preachers and teachers but and farmers. But the sense to serve, is it necessary? Is it really part of our purpose to serve? Or is this, we got to convince the collective it's really your purpose to serve? Well, great question. Don't you think we're always serving? I don't know. Frankly, I don't know. <laughs> like, we may not love how we're serving, but that's up to us, right? We are motivated. The intention, the why, is I need to make money. I need to survive. I need, you know, the, the whole world is a wreck. The conversations are, oh my God, cauliflower is eight bucks when it used to be two. I mean, I, you know, True. Oh, it, oh my God, how are we going to survive? And we got these leaders that I, I, I don't know if I can trust or it, it, there's so much chaos out here. Mm -hmm. Right. And so there are, you know, I, I get, I become inspired. What is inspired? It inspires to be in spirit. When I see people drawing or creating art, I find that magical, right? It's like they see the vision inside their head and it somehow lands on the, the medium, whether it be a canvas or a wall. And that came through them. And not everybody's going to go to look at this piece of art and get it, but someone will. So in, in, in being who this artist is, as being the creator of this art, is serving somebody, whether it be 10 people or 10 million people, doesn't make a difference. You have just served a possibility of beauty to another human being. I could be the best barista at Starbucks. 
this person came in and asked for a mocha brulada, and I gave it to them, but I had a little bit of a little love in there. Um, but we've become so self-obsessed lately, so selfish, me, 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 me. I will give you that service if you pay me X number of dollars, and then I'm just going to give you 75% of the effort to make that happen. Because I don't really, ca- I don't really care about you. Just want the money. Because, you know, the core why is my survival. The core why, it, my cause is about me. And I serve every day. I hate my job, or I, I, you know, I'm a doctor, and you got ten minutes. Time is money. Like. We've lost that. I think we both have experienced kindness, compassion, and um, respect. We've lost that. It's time to come back to that. And love is respect. It's self-respect. It's self-understanding. It's to be valued, to be heard, to be seen. Um, And so... What we're facing right now is that nobody's really remembering we need to respect one another. And even though I hate my job, my service, um, I just do it for the money. We get, we get to change that collective consciousness is that if I really value who I am, I'm going to give my hundred percent in everything I do. And, um, you know, the goats of the world, right? Whether you go back to goats being the greatest of all time. Mm -hmm. If you look at some of these fabulous teachers, motivational speakers, I think it was Jim Rohn who said, you've got to give it your 110%. It could be somebody else, but I just remember that quote. Be the best at whatever you're doing. And even if, if it's a job that you don't like, you're learning how to be the best at what you do and that could go from being um i don't know a a nurse to becoming the um ceo of some i don't know something some nursing thing but the point is is that we don't have that attitude because we're just in surviving and I can't thrive and look at all these people doing it and I'm all alone and I da 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 da. I'm confused. There's so much chaos. Which direction do I go? Oh my God, Bitcoin or stocks or there's money and digitize this and oh my goodness, there's so much. So we gotta choose. We gotta choose better. We gotta give. We gotta I have to we have to ask ourselves why am I giving this meaning to this? Because yeah, we don't have you, to give it meaning. You don't, but we're so reactive. Mm-hmm. We're always reactive to stuff. We're looking. I'm finding uh I moved to Toronto re- recently and it's the same as LA. What is Everybody, that? in the sense of of how people are, oh, interesting. people are looking to be offended. Oh, interesting. They are reactionary rather than responding hmm. with conscious consciousness, with care, with patience, with empathy, with compassion, with receptivity with emotional intelligence or balance, which are all feminine qualities. And because we're feeling so insecure about ourselves and we want to get things done in action and independent and I, I'm strong and I'm resilient and confident and but I'm going to protect my, because I'm the man, masculine, I'm going to protect my territory and feel stable well that's how we're behaving is 
masculine dominant. And the imbalances are still continuing right now because we want to survive. We want to, you know, uh, have those masculine qualities, but we're giving up on the feminine. Yet women are saying women empowerment. Right. Then be women empowerment by balancing the masculine and feminine. Men, stop your toxic mas masculinity. And this is not about you. Stop suppressing your uh, your emotions. Stop stop with the idea that you have to be aggressive in order to get what you want. Power, 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 right? Stop uh, thinking that you have all the answers, and even if you don't, you're faking it, and it's taking you in the wrong place. Like I've seen so much. I've been, you know, I've been truly blessed. To be in Los Angeles, because to me, it's the hub of spirituality, right? That's interesting. And, and you find all kinds of people. You're, you're in so many different possibilities, which, is, which was unlike Toronto when I was growing up here, where you, you knew you had family-oriented, work hard, you know, the values were different. Mm -hmm. And... The, the hub of L.A. Wa, was, I'm going to say was, creativity. Mm -hmm. Creativity is a feminine aspect. It's intuition. But then you found the others. <laughs> you, you had such a hodgepodge of personalities. You know, I, I've worked with celebrities. I've worked with homeless people and everything in between. Yep. And so. And. And met with so many teachers and and yeah yogananda was a force for sure for sure because it was he brought the eternal wisdom it's timeless and he was a trailblazer pushing you know and teaching you to find god self realizes finding who you what you are not who you are what you are and and then having enough um calm and silence to listen to what your true soul purpose is and living that um i know i'm going all over the place because yeah. i'm so excited <laughs> well what's interesting about this in particular coming discussing yogananda your uncle um when he came here and by the way I, I know it sounds like a dream to be yogananda but looking at his history he certainly did not have it easy in a lot of different ways but we'll talk about that some other time he really met with a lot of controversy and uh so and and as many challenges as any business person ever does so what's interesting is that him being coming from the east and settling basically in los angeles um and having centers all around the world he came because this was an efficient country and he wanted to bring the consciousness of the east to the west to the efficient west so we're not so efficient anymore so my question to you is about is it possible that you're going to sort of bring this full circle from from los angeles being sort of a hub of creativity and spirituality and you know, everybody's sort of here. I mean, we're sort of one big melting pot here. Are you moving that, extending that back to India in the sense that, I mean, India is becoming very westernized as well, but it still has right. that soul of, of, of humanness, of, of the existence beyond being human. At least that's my sense. Yeah. I am being pulled to India. Mm -hmm. Um, for my own personal understanding and bringing in a vibration, mm -hmm. uh, frequency of mm, spiritual significance and and rooting with the with the temples the ashrams nature i mean nature has all the wisdom it's seen so much 
And when you, when you walk into a forest or whatever your favorite place is with these gigantic trees, they talk to you if you really listen, right? So I feel like India has so much history. And yeah, I'm going to go. It's almost like being like Jesus going on the yeah. 40 days, 40 nights. Right. And I feel that that's going to happen. I, I, I want to connect with more people there and influential people. And I, I feel like there's some messages that I need to, to experience, mm. to observe. Mm. How, I mean, how, how do a billion plus people coexist together on this small piece of land? Right. And, you think about Canada having 40 million people, which is the same, almost the same population of California. And we're having problems in Canada uh, with all this space. And, and <clears throat> like the world is so beautiful. It's such an incredible place. And that's where my mind is now is that it's, I am so grateful. Gratitude is such a beautiful thing that we don't do enough of. But when you think about it, we're at an incredible time where we're seeing the transition from the Piscean Age to Aquarian. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to move into that, and people are going to go, people live like that? No, we get right. to witness the transition. How powerful is that, right? Uh, it has its challenges, don't get me wrong. Right. Um, but we're all energy. We're never created or destroyed. We're souls. This is just another version of of who we are. So India feels the so it's kind of like kind of like LA, diverse, right? And it's, you see the absolute poor to the abs the wealthiest, right? Right, and so much history and um. I haven't been there in a while. My sister will be my guide because we're kind of similar in our approach to life, obviously, because there's a generation. But we together have learned so much about who we are and what we are. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. And then possibly creating, starting the new love more nation which is what i've been talking about i mm -hmm. you know my trademark is love more mm -hmm. but i i feel like i'm going to be calling it love more nation where yeah. every person is their own nation they're sovereign they bring something a collective to the collective in their uniqueness and sharing it without competition but more cooperation and to really understand that we are all one. So I, I'm still working on it, but I feel like I'm going to go to India, collect, create something, and then bring it. I want to be worldwide. I always have been. I mean, I have a client base that's worldwide. Right. But I want to, I want to serve in a different way now. And, um, and I've been so fearful over the past few years because I don't know if I'm ready and, all the stuff that was going through me, and now I'm ready. And I'm so happy that I went through the dark night of the soul or the awakening um, and really understanding what, how this was ticking. And now that I'm at the frequency that I need currently, and it might go higher, lower, it doesn't make a difference. I just want to land where I belong without judgment. We're so good at judging as humanity. And the that's what culture. Right. And it's because there's a button in us that's reflecting the person that we're judging. Yeah, we're harsh too. Harsh it's and a reflection. <laughs> yes. Does that answer your question, by the way? About yeah, I think it's interesting because uh, just having known you for a long time and then done in a lot of research about Yogananda and understanding, you know, what his initial motives were. I mean, he came here basically after World War II or in the midst of World War II and things were, I'm sure, people at that time. Well, he came in, world, I think, around World War I, wasn't world it? Because 1920. 
1920 is when he came to America. So, and then in 1935, he went back to India for a visit, and then he came back, and then the, another world started. Right. But he he came at a time where what <laughs> spirituality? What? Right. You know. And we were in such yeah. a huge flux then. I mean, I'm yes. People then were like questioning their existence themselves. Maybe not in, as publicly or deeply as maybe they were. I don't know. Church, it might have just been more in churches. But it was such a tremendous time of change, or and people Absolutely. were questioning if the world was going to survive, just like we are now. I'm sure we're exactly. going to survive. So exactly. Exactly. You're. That's a good parallel that you're say, uh, saying. Yeah. And, you know, I feel honored and yet privileged uh, to be living in North America. I'm very thankful that my dad came here, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, in the 60s, early 60s. Because I look at my own family and the people that are in India, they, they don't have nearly anything that I have. Materially. Materially. Mm -hmm. But even opportunities. Mm -hmm. This is true. I can, we, can, we can always go back to the materials. But what can I learn? What did I experience? And they don't have the, that, that level of experience. And even, even if some of them have got the job and are middle class, um, I think I'm blessed because I have had the opportunity to, to meet so many different personalities. Mm -hmm. And experienced so many different ways and personalities, the rich, the poor, the meat, you know, all it's done is it's brought me a lot of compassion, empathy, um, understanding, um, and, and the things that I've read and experienced through three gurus, through, um, I want to share all this. And I'm I, I'm I'm working on it. You know, I, I write a book and then I put it away because I feel like there's more to what I want to say. And now that right. I've kind of found the foundation that unity consciousness where it's at, uh, let's really find out what makes us tick personally. What is it that I stand up for? What is the be the cause? Mm -hmm. Sticking to sticking with that frequency, but knowing that we need to be adaptable at the same time, right? I mean, men need to learn emotional resilience. You know, you talk about it, like we got to move away from these rigid ways of living, this binary dual living, and really embrace and accept all things. I mean, I think that's why we have so many categories to our sexual orientation. I don't even call it gender. Right. Because um, I think there's only two in the sense of what Hermes refers to. Maybe we'll find out there's actually hundreds. I don't know. <laughs> you know, and that we got to find a way to be holistic leaders, looking at it from a mm. much larger picture, a more balanced approach to life. Right. It's not about being assertive. I got the power. I'm decisive. I've got control. Uh, but we need to be more collaborators and be empathetic in, in nurturing and, and having those feminine uh, qualities balance out the masculine, right? We need to um, really look at what's, what's within our mental – if, 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 if – Law of mentalism is a way we create what we create. Then what is it that we have in our in our mindsets? Because it has to be accessed through our heart sets, which is connected to the divine. So we have to do a better job in in, in embracing the feminine, both men and women, and all genders or labels, right? And and we got to be able to communicate with each other with vulnerability i may not have the right answer i'm seeking i'm seeking your perception and and you know um 
really, really acknowledging and respecting and seeking to listen and understand each other. Don't just pick a a side because, oh, I've always been a Democratic or I've been always been a Republican and and da 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 da. No, we gotta we gotta redo this in a way because it's the system is breaking. It doesn't work anymore. Um, and and the need right now for, I would say, social harmony. Like stop, like stop trying to make others wrong so that you could be right. Stop choosing a side. A side. Look at what's really going on instead of what you only see from one perspective really listen observe and this is this has been uh, observing has been uh, a pinnacle wise approach by every mm, teacher that I've talked to mm-hmm. whether it be the Jewish tradition, whether it be, it, it doesn't matter. I've been to all the houses because I was curious. What's the difference? Right. But when you go to these houses, they all emanate the same thing. Pure love. Pure love. How the, how it's interpreted is, you know, different. I like that but, you call different religions different houses. That's, that's kind of refreshing, actually. Since we right. often pit our religions against one another. Um, Right. right, which is which is the Piscean age. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think you it's have a lot of wisdom, glo- Sujan. I think you, I you have a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge. I think this is interesting in in uh, knowing you uh, and watching you evolve over the years. It's also representative of us kind of uh, unveiling ourselves, like we we're allowing, or I think the energies actually the cosmic energies space weather, whatever it is, solar flares, it's like the truth is coming through both for what's in our physical existence and for what is ourselves. So right. it's interesting to see you unveil you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, that's the game. Mm-hmm. The game of life is to unveil God consciousness, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And uh you know, I've been I've been rereading. I have a different um, viewpoint about about the, the these prominent spiritual leaders. But you know, Jesus comes to mind. Yogananda comes to mind. Krishnamurti comes to mind. Neville Goddard comes to mind. Dr. Joe has done some great work. Mm-hmm. Greg Braden, mm-hmm. Robert, uh, Edward Grant. Um, and there's so many. I mean, I love Carolyn Miss, who of has course. evolved. Right. You know, I don't want to just uh, share the men. There's a lot of incredible, powerful women. Marion Williamson, who understands the core essence is love through Course of Miracles, you know? So all the messages are, are, are just rampantly coming through, and, and thanks to a medium called social media or YouTube or whatever, we are able to turn to the channel that makes sense for us and then emanate whatever wisdom that comes through us out to the world. You know, I, I, I say I'm Krishna's flute. Krishna played the flute, and he he's yeah. I, oh, I I'll, I'll call him the love god, but he was so in so entrenched to the feminine, the woman, um, Radha, which is another goddess who was, you know, really the creative aspect of planet Earth, if you will, and Krishna is just. He's so blissed out and he's playing because he's seeing Radha, the feminine. And oh and and what what's running through him is an emanation of her love. It's just a beautiful so the flute is what we are. In Hinduism they call it Sat Chit 
Ananda. That's why we're here. Okay? Sat is truth. Chit is mind consciousness. And Ananda is pure bliss. So Yoga Nanda means bliss of yoga. So it took me a long time to come from a, a little kid out of Toronto who was one of few brown boys who went through racism, who created a character of being um, a clown sometimes, and then it went to becoming an, an intellect, and then it became a lot of different things, and some of it you met. <laughs> but I now sit here with joy that all that taught me to what I am worth, to what I am here to be, to know what I am, who I am, and how I serve. So that's the beautiful thing about what's going on in this moment. And, and it's only going to get better, but it's going to get worse before we can get better. If we don't understand the polarity of what we're doing, um, we're just going to continue on this, well, not so great life, in my opinion. Right. Of what we can be, potentially. Right. So we'll see how this all works out. We'll see if we sort of fracture <laughs> into two different yeah. worlds. And and I love that word fracture because fractals, I'm sure you've heard that in mm -hmm. quantum. We're all a fractal. We all have the whole in us. We're just a piece, a hologram of the whole. And if we can learn to, to access that hologram and shift ourselves mm -hmm. in a way to being closer, if not being what you're here to be, now we all become messengers to each other and and to ignite passions, inspiration, enthusiasm. Enthusiasm comes from the word entheos, which is in God. Inspiration, in spirit. I mean, that's why we're here. This is not end-all, be-all, you know? It, this is just a, a moment in time. Um, a canvas, if you will. Right? You're going through, uh, you know what comes to mind? Remember those projectors with the slides that you put in? Mm -hmm. A carousel? Right. You have access to the entire carousel. When you go into a state of calm and silence, and you can move through each slide. And right now we're choosing to be Sue, John, and Diana. Right? And in this moment. In this Everything's moment. happening in this moment. And and that slide, when you project it onto the screen, is the moment. This is what you're seeing. But you have the ability to go through every slide in your mind and access that and go you know what, I don't like the way I'm doing it this way now. I'm going to change it to what I want to project onto the screen now. Oh, wow, look how beautiful I am. And my husband, wife, or spouse is great, my kids. Whatever it is that you want to do. Oh, I, I own Love More Nation, and everybody's like getting their fill of love and understanding. Like, we get to choose. We're not stuck in this. And it's not linear. And we can have another discussion about that. That's going to take hours just to talk <laughs> right. about. Right, we but... can talk about time, which doesn't exist. But, <laughs> but, I, but I like this. It's, I think that simplifies things in the sense that, uh, you know, we are the projector also. And uh, so we can create – it's creating – I still think I'm still challenged by creating my own reality because the thoughts there just the programming is I mean we call it programming, but what is it? It's sort of just stuff that keeps flying through the computer. So if I can change the projector, which I as somebody who's a creative understands, then that that's really simple. 
I won't say I wouldn't say you're changing the projector. You're changing what is p- being projected right through you. Is that what you meant? Yeah. So I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not changing okay, the, okay. the mechanism, but I I'm changing the slide. I'm changing what I see yes. on that slide. Right. And and that's where all the masters talk about: visualize, affirm, say mantras, quiet the mind, do breath work, go out into nature. I mean, everybody's saying the same thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> at the end right. of the day it's a lot easier than we think it is yeah and because we grew up in a fashion or were program- programmed a certain way depending wherever you are in the world uh, we were programmed in a certain way and we drank whatever we drank from our ancestors all the way down to our uh, friends and social circles and they actually created um, fears and doubts and resistances, and and it created our blocks where we 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 were not flowing. So as an energy healer, I, I I see concentrations of where things are stuck throughout someone's body, but in the chakras, which is which which is spinning the the life force, if you will, and and. We get clues as to what our blocks are based on where where these blockages are in our energetic system, right? right. So I'm not the healer. You are. Because mm-hmm. you're the one who's giving meaning to everything. I'm just asking you the questions. I'm fac- facilitating your healing because when I do work on somebody, I already assume you're whole. The law of assumption. I see you whole and joyful and blissful and loving and caring and everything you can think of as God consciousness. So when I go into that space of a higher vibration, I'm bringing that to to each um, session without having to say it. Because I want you to um, reflect what is going on. Mm -hmm. And all I'm doing is asking you questions, not directing you. I don't have any power over you. I'm not your authority figure. And the word authority has the word author, right? So you have to author whatever it is that you want. You have to be your own authority, which is called empowerment, which is called sovereignty, right? Which is aligning, alignment to the divine that created you. So that you can serve on its behalf, his behalf, her behalf of the mission that you you think you are on. So it's not that complicated, simple. We just have made it complicated because we're answering to Simon. Remember Simon says? Mm -hmm. Everybody's an authority figure over us and what we should be or shouldn't be. Whether it's uh, a president, whether it's a celebrity like Kardashian, whatever it may be, whatever you, whatever station you're on, but maybe you, you have to really look to see if the station you're on is really you mm-hmm. to your for your highest potential. So, and frankly, whatever you're really comfortable with, because if you're truthful with yourself, is this is this really where I'm comfortable at? Is this really my true essence? Um, it's not even where you want to be at. It's like, is this truly who I am? Right. That's interesting. You use the word comfort. Mm-hmm. Why did you use comfort? Um, I don't think. Uh, because I think comfort can also reflect our uh, what is our essence. Uh, I think being in discomfort okay. isn't necessarily a bad thing. I think being overly comfortable can be a bad thing because uh, it can be apathy or it can be a reluctance to, to shift. But I think if you feel what's really comfortable for you, I mean, what is your system willing to tolerate? What is your what is your expansion? Um, how how big are you? Can you can you tolerate um, being a hundred million million dollar millionaire? Can you tolerate being uh, a homeless person? 
Uh, so what are you comfortable with in your truth, in your truth? Mm -hmm. truth? Mm -hmm. What is the truth for you? Yeah, I'm thinking, okay, so I, I, I'm taking it. <laughs> I, I, I know I'm just going to suggest that it's not about being comfortable as it is. Um, knowing you're safe all the time to be oh. who you are and that the chaos is what this world is and whatever we give attention to becomes that's where the energy goes right where your attention wherever your focus is and in creation we have in creation there's also destruction of the old right so there's going to be some discomfort and to be able to walk outside of our comfort zones to create the new sometimes by breaking down those beliefs and systems that no longer work, shedding the old skin, if you will, mm -hmm. that, that might, I don't even know what a snake feels when it's shedding its, its old skin, but there might be some discomfort. Mm -hmm. So what if we said that we're willing to um, create the truth of who we are mm -hmm. in a space of safety, right? In a in uh, of grace, of trust, of faith, um, and believing that we are what we say we are, trusting ourselves and the higher powers, but learning that because I am part of that, therefore it can happen. And then, because believing is seeing, but we've been trained, seeing is believing. Seeing is believing. Show me the proof, right? But all these all these teachers are saying, believing is seeing is what you want to do. You got to imagine that you can do this. You visualize that you can do this, or or create what you want. And I think we have lost touch with that, too. Because mm. every day we're creating. I mean, every day. You created today's podcast. Well, we both are. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I like this that. collab. It's a collaboration. Yeah. I'm not here going, this is my show, baby. I, I know all the stuff. No. We're collaborating and sharing and being uh vulnerable and and in in the idea that this particular podcast is going to be shared with whoever wants to watch it into the world and trusting that somebody's going to get one nugget out of this whole thing that's going to alter their experience of life i like that believing is seen that's a, yeah. I like the twist on that, uh, especially when we were in this big uh, push to manifest and affirm and all that. It's very simple, believing and seeing, rather than seeing is believing. Yeah, there's a hawk right outside my window what? right this minute as we're talking about this. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. That's so cool. That's so cool. Um, okay. Yeah, but I'm on the 10th floor, and I got this beautiful, gorgeous view. Wow. But, um um, I fire. the hawk kind of circled right in front of me as we're saying wow. we're talking just now. Believing is seeing. Believing is that I am worthy. Mm -hmm. Believing is that I am love. I have always been loved. That's believing. Believing that I am intelligent. Believing that I can change. Believing that I am strength, believing that I am compassion, and I am a collabor collaborator. I am oneness. I am part of something grander than I can ever even imagine. I know that I have powers to to shift things around me. I am. I am. I am. You know, that's that's what I say every day. I am, because the I am represents the creator of all to me. Just like Om, 
you know, that's the vibrational frequency. We, you know, we're, we're seeing more and more frequency based, um, uh, modalities, mm-hmm. if you will, sound, mm-hmm. right? Crystal balls, uh, et cetera. It's always been there. Right. Even in healing in we, our medical devices, we're seeing it much more clearly med beds, all of those sorts of things are becoming more predominant. Thank goodness. Cause they've been around forever. Right. This, this technology has been around forever. It's just been a lack of um, support for it. So Right, because it was too woo-woo. It's too woo-woo, and, and the pharmaceutical companies yeah. couldn't benefit from it. I see that. Right. Uh, yeah. So, so it's, it's, an, it's an interesting time. I think we're going to get through this, but we're going to be met with a lot of negative conspiracy theorists, whatever. And once we experience what war can do in this lifetime, in this moment, like you said, it's a full circle of what Yogananda faced. I think we're seeing war right now and the atrocities of to to the human life. Um, I think through all this, we're going to see the truth of where the power is and where the money could be and all the stuff. I don't want to say anything that, you know, shuts us down here, but it's, it's time for us to wake up the awakening, the surrender to that. And, uh, I'm really, really happy to be here right now with amongst so many beautiful teachers. Um, and you don't have to be a, Everybody's a teacher and everybody's a student, by the way. And um, and there's such an influx of holistic teachers too. No matter where they are in their level or of experience, it's it. The idea is that they're being of service. So. Amen. Amen. Okay. So do you want to announce anything? Uh, Remind the listeners, viewers, how can they get in touch with you? Are you available for one-on-ones? What's evolving with you? All those sorts of things. How do we, how do we connect with Um, you? Any events upcoming? I, I've been uh, developing. I'm in that development stage Mm -hmm. and the actual manifestation is going to be happening probably spring of 2025. Mm -hmm. Um, But my trek to India uh, is going to happen early part of 2025. So that's, so I'm holding Mm off. but yes, I'm still doing one-on-one sessions. I'm doing some seminars locally. Um, So they can get a hold the number one thing right now is my Instagram, okay, which is Sujon Data Healer, mm-hmm. and I don't. I've been really just being right now, so I'm just putting all kinds of stuff on on there. But if you want to talk to me personally or DM me, is the best way. And if you want to book a session, we can do that through Instagram. Um, you can go to my website, although that's going to be totally coming down and reinvented but that's okay um yeah or my email s databoy at gmail.com is another way which is <laughs> solid and secure right but yeah watch out here i come love more nation is coming so i'm hoping to become not hoping we gotta <laughs> you're gonna do it words have power yeah. yes we are One the more people. nation. We are the people. Yes, we are the people. And uh, so I'm excited. I appreciate you. Thank you uh, for creating this portal called Soul, uh, Soul Fam. And uh, word for our sponsors, Oweli Supplements and CBD Pure, both whom have generously offered to give you 15% off using the Soul Fam podcast coupon code Soul Fam, S O U L F A M, and free shipping. And trust me, when you're ordering stuff like this, it actually really adds up. You can save quite a bit of money, several dollars for every order. 
both Lexi and I have worked with these products and their companies, and we have firsthand experience, and we really like these companies, sincerely. Oweli, O-W-E-L-I dot com, is a supplement company that uses natural ingredients based on ancient knowledge coupled with modern science, which sounds a lot like the Soul Fan podcast. I am a huge supplement person. I take multiple supplements each day. The quality of Oweli supplements is high and effective, in my opinion. I take Move for joint health because I work out almost every day. I do yoga, I walk, I hike, I ride horses. And secondly, I mix collagen peptides, hydrolyzed protein for a protein shake every day so I can be sure to get the right amount of protein in my body every day. And for women, I personally feel that's super important. CBD Pure, www.cbdpure.com, is made with non-GMO hemp grown without herbicides, pesticides, and other dangerous chemicals. Both Lexi and I feel like this is a stellar product. I use the CBD Pure 500 cream for pain in my neck from texting and working at a computer and a car accident I was in. Lexi uses CBD Pure Pet Health to help some of her posse of rescued cats who show up at her doorstep. They often have joint issues and other movement issues, and this product really seems to help Lexi's cats. Both products work superbly. No harmful side effects, at least from our experience. So once again, we thank our sponsors, CBD Pure and Oweli Supplements. We'll post links to both product lines on our Instagrams, on my link tree, and on YouTube, and on our upcoming website, Patreon. Just remember the code for 15% off with free shipping, which once again adds up to a lot, is SOULFAM, S-O-U-L-F-A-M. That's SOULFAM for our SOULFAM.